everybody, my name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching and joining me as I share my sewing journey and my making journey. So today's video has been a long time coming. I've filmed this video, believe it or not, three times so far. Uh, the first time it was too dark, the second time I'm not quite sure what happened but there was a problem with it. And then the third time I um, filmed it, edited it, got it ready to publish and then I deleted it permanently by accident. Um, at the moment the UK is in another lockdown which means schools are partially open to key workers and the vulnerable children and then we're also doing homeschooling. So currently it means I'm filming sort of 25 plus videos with my team, um, editing them and then publishing them each day for our families at home. So in between sort of sorting out those videos and getting them ready and then deleting last week's videos, um, I deleted over 200 videos off my phone um, a few days ago and within that I managed to delete this video. Uh, and I couldn't work out how to get it back because I permanently deleted it, which was quite annoying. So I'm back filming it again, but hopefully this time around it will be perfect and I can just get it published for you. So if you're watching this, that means that is what's happened. So apologies for the delay because this is going to be a roundup of all of the Christmas gifts that I got related to sewing or making. Um. Now over on my Instagram page, I talked about wanting to learn to knit and that was a big part of my Christmas presents. Um, and I've also started learning how to crochet. So I'll put all of that stuff at the end and I will start with the just the sewing related goodies first so that if you're not interested in the knitting and the crocheting, um, you can skip ahead to the end of the video. I will start with what I'm wearing and what I'm wearing is something something relatively new and something relatively old. And I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like. Um, but it's a billy jumper, which is a Tilly in the Buttons pattern, and I went for the balloon sleeves, which I just love as a detail, and then they're sort of balloony here. Now this is a cotton jersey that I got from New Craft House ages and ages ago as a remnant, and it is quite a lightweight jersey, so the shoulders don't poof as much as normal. And then I'm wearing it with the Jennifer Lauren Ivy Pinafore, which is one of the first pinafores I ever made. I absolutely adore this pattern and every time I pull this out of my wardrobe I wear it at least once a week. Every time I put it on I'm, I think to myself I must make more because I absolutely love this style of pinafore. It's so comfortable. It is lined. Um, let me stand up and show you. So it's quite a straightforward pinafore. Uh, it's got pockets which I absolutely love. Um, it fastens here and it's quite a high neck for a pinafore. So you've just got this fastening here and then you've got the facing on the inside and then the lining. Uh, fasten that back up. Uh, really quite straightforward pinafore. And I just used a black cord that I got from my local fabric shop. It's quite cheap. It's a really lightweight cord. So actually I'd quite like to make it in something that's slightly chunkier. And I don't know why I haven't made more of these because it's one of my favorite pinafore dresses. Um, I just like the style of it and I like the fit and it feels really comfortable. I think for me, um, it's quite roomy around this area, which I like, and I, you know, I like to be able to feel like I can move. I have made the Bobby Pinafore by Tilly and the Buttons. I've made two of those, and I don't reach for them half as much as I reach for this one. So I really must get on and make some more of this pattern. And then the Billy is just the perfect, comfortable jumper to put on underneath. So that's what I'm wearing. That's quite a rambly introduction, so apologies. So for Christmas, I got a mixture of different things. So I got a couple of patterns. I got some fabric. Um, I got a jeans kit, which I'm going to talk about. Um, and then I got some embroidery stuff, which was interesting because I haven't tried embroidery yet. Um, so let's crack on. I'll show you the fabrics first of all. And I got some really cute fabrics. And the first one I think is a viscose jersey that I got from Sony Sunshine. My husband bought these for me. Um, and it's in this gorgeous like rose print. It's so bouncy as a fabric, really bouncy. And I think this is going to become a billy um, jumper because I think this would look lovely and the sleeves would be lovely in this too. It would make quite a lightweight billy. So it's a sort of a pale blue background um, and then it's got purple flowers, navy and white. Um, and I just love it. It's quite a retro print, I think. It looks quite retro, which I absolutely love. Um, so I've got definitely got enough to make myself a billy jumper so I think that's what I'm going to do and then my husband also got me another uh, piece of fabric from Semi Sunshine again and it's this gorgeous 
Um, I'm not quite sure what this type of fabric is. I'll have to go onto Harriet's website um, and see what it was called, but it's this beautiful, it feels like a viscose again. Um, I'm not quite sure what the content is, but I'll put a little image in that tells you more details about the fabric. It's got this lovely like sheen to it as well, and it's got fruits all over it. So I think they're nectarines um, and peaches, um, and there's flowers, but it's like a pale background. It's really floaty and buttery and soft. Now I think I've got enough to make myself a top and I think I'm gonna turn this into the sagebrush top because I think that would be quite a cute spring type top to wear. Um, beautiful colors, absolutely beautiful. Um, so I'm really pleased with those two from my husband. Then um, the Felicity Fabrics team sent all of the bloggers, which was a really lovely thing to do, a little Christmas gift. And within it, we got some hand cream, a little embroidery set, and then we all got some fabric. And I got this beautiful tartan fabric, which I think is a cotton. It's absolutely lovely. And um, if I open it up, you can see. So it's a red background, and then it's got green and yellow and black running through it. So I think I've got about a metre of it. Now, I'm not sure what to use this for. I think I might pack it away um, and get it out ready for Christmas next year and turn it into something for Christmas, maybe a table runner or some napkins. Um, I'm not quite sure with this fabric, but I absolutely adore it. It's very similar, actually, to the fabric that I used to make my recent LED dress. I do love tartan, um, and I've got a tartan indigo dress, which I wear all the time. Um, just layered up as well so I do like a bit of tartan. My nan was Scottish so it's always quite a comforting fabric to see um, and when I was growing up my mum used to put us in a lot of um, tartan fabrics too so I do love it I just don't know what to turn it into at the moment. If you've got any ideas do let me know but I think I am going to save it for Christmas um, 2021 and maybe use it to make some decorations for our table uh, when we have guests around. I'm hoping and I'm optimistic that by December 2021 will be allowed to have guests over again. So that was a beautiful piece of fabric. And then in my family, we do Secret Santa. So instead of buying for everybody, um, we put in together and we spend a certain amount of money and um, we do a Secret Santa. On my list this year, I asked for some really chunky cord fabric from System in Tarka. It's absolutely gorgeous and I got some. Now it's in a black fabric, black colourway, which is unusual for me. Normally I go for something quite bright. But a bit like this Ivy Pinafore, I want to make myself either, I haven't decided yet, to either make dungarees or to make myself some trousers. Maybe the Portobello, the Nina Lee Portobello trousers, although I don't know if cord would work. So do let me know if you've made the Nina Lee Portobello trousers in a cord fabric. But it's this gorgeous, chunky corduroy. It's going to be really difficult to show because it's black. Um, but I absolutely love it and I've got a good couple of metres. I think I might have asked for 2.5 metres. It's beautifully soft. I cannot wait to turn it into something. But I just, I, I just need a basic standard black pair of trousers or dungarees that I can team with things like this. Um, and I think I'll get tons and tons of wear out of whatever I turn this fabric into. Do let me know though if you've got any trouser recommendations for cord. I have made the Jessie trousers by Tilly and the Buttons, but I don't want to use that pattern again for this cord. I'd like something else. Now, this cord, I'm just seeing if it's got a stretch, it hasn't really got any stretch to it whatsoever. So if anyone's got any recommendations, do let me know in the comments below. I don't like things that are super tight fitting. Um, so I need to do a bit of research really, because it's such beautiful fabric. I want to make sure that I'm 100% sure on what pattern I go for. So those were the fabrics, and then I've got a couple of patterns to show you. So I asked for a couple of Megan Nielsen patterns. The first one's a basic, and then the second one goes with a box that I got as well. So the first pattern is the Rowan by Megan Nielsen, and this comes in six different variations, which is why I was keen to get this pattern. I love it when a pattern comes with lots of different variations, because I really feel like you get your money out of the pattern. So these are the different variations that you can go for. So there is um, View A, which is a crew neck t-shirt short sleeves. View B is a V-neck t-shirt three quarter sleeves. I don't know if you can see those pictures, that's not helpful. Uh, view C is a turtle tea, turtleneck tee long sleeves. View D is the crew neck bodysuit short sleeves. 
View E is the V-neck bodysuit, three quarter sleeves. And then view F is the turtleneck bodysuit with long sleeves. Now the one that I'm most interested in, there's a couple. This bottom one, it's a bit like the Freya top by Tilly and the Buttons. So I'm quite keen to try that one. I'm also really keen to try the V-neck t-shirt. And then I'd also quite like to try the body um, suits. I've never made a body suit before, but I think that they would be quite a nice layering piece. My only hesitation with making a bodysuit is obviously it fastens between your legs and I think that would be a bit of a pain going to the toilet. But then I know people say that about jumpsuits and I absolutely love jumpsuits so maybe I could overlook, overlook that issue. Okay, so the Rowan comes in sizes 0 to 20. So a 0 starts with a bust measurement of 32 inches, a waist measurement of 24 inches and a hip measurement of 34 inches. And then the size 20 is a bust 46, waist 38 and hip 48. So I'm really looking forward to giving that a try. I think it'll be another basic addition to my wardrobe. And I do quite like having different styles of t-shirts to draw upon and jumpers. And I do think that it'll act as another layering piece for my wardrobe too. So I'm really excited about that one. And then the second pattern that I asked for from Megan Nielsen is um, I'm on a mission this year to make my own pair of jeans. So I've used the So Over It Mia jeans pattern as just an introduction to making jeans and that's quite a basic jeans pattern. And I've got a pair of black ready to wear jeans that I wear constantly and I've worn them to death. Um, despite mending them, I've got holes in the knees and um, I think where I've worn them to work and I've been crawling around on the floor and things. I've mended them, I've put patches and even those patches are starting to wear. I've had these jeans for a good, I think about 15 years. So I think it is time that I tried to make myself um, a pair of black jeans to replace the jeans that I've got. So I asked for, in the same sort of idea as the Rowan, I wanted a pattern that had multiple options because I feel like then um, you've got more that you can sort of do with that pattern. So I asked for the Ash jeans by Megan Nielsen and they come in four different styles. So it's an ultimate stretch jean pattern um, because I also wanted a jeans pattern that I could use stretch denim with. Um, I, it's really important for me that if I'm wearing anything that is fitted um, around the hips and the waist, I've got a little bit of wiggle room in there. Um, and I just felt like a stretch jeans pattern would give me a bit more comfort around that area. So that's why I wanted a stretch jeans pattern. So I've gone with this one. It's a stretch jean. Um, there are four cuts and multiple lengths for tall, regular and cropped. And the pattern features a comfortable rise, close fit through the waist and hips and classic jeans detail. And I'm really looking forward to giving them a try. I'm really excited about giving this top stitching a good go as well. I think that'll be a really, um, I think it'll be quite a satisfying sew. I really love, although I am, sometimes it's nice to have something that's quite quick to make. I also love something that is quite slow and there's lots of details and, that, you know, you have to follow it step by step. It's quite methodical to sew. Um, that sense of achievement at the end of that sew is really lovely. Once I've done something like that, I do then want to be able to dive into something that's quite quick. Um, and recently I worked on an Eden coat for my mum um, and there were loads of steps with the Eden coat. Um, lots of things I had to really think about, lots of precise steps within that pattern. And as soon as I'd finished that, I went on to whip up a quick jersey top because I knew I needed something almost like a palette cleanser. Does anyone else do that when you've made something that's quite laborious and and it's you know it's taken a lot of brain power and you've had to be really precise and concentrate i've said this before when i'm making gifts for people that i take my time and i tend to use a lot more concentration when i'm making something for someone else than if i was making something for myself so it's quite nice to have a palette cleanser something that's really quick and easy that you don't need to think about too much so onto the ash jeans. So they come in sizes that link up to your waist measurement. So it starts as a waist 24 inches and then it goes up to a, a waist size 36 inches. So for the size 24, your hips are a 34 inch and then up to a 36, your hips are a 46 inch. So I am going to have to think really carefully about measurements and what size I go for because there is quite a difference between my waist measurement and my hip measurement. So currently my waist is a 27 inch and my hips are a 35 inch. That puts me across two different sizes. So I need to, I think what I'll probably do, I'm definitely going to twirl these jeans um, and I might do a sew long for them actually because I think it'd be good for me to document the process of me twirling them and what I found out with fitting and things. 
So I'm just going to get some cheap denim to twirl them before I use the denim that I've actually got to make them up. So I think I'll probably start off with the 27 inch waist and then maybe grade down for the hips. Um, I might grade down a size for the hips, but then once I've twirled them, I can work out whether I need to take any more out of the hip before I actually dive in and use my actual fabric that I've got. I hope that made sense. I'm not sure if it did make sense. So I will show you the line drawings and I'll let you know what style I'm hoping to go for. So the line drawings, if I just show you, you've got four versions. So version one is a slim leg jeans. Version two is a skinny jeans. Version three is a flare. And then version four is a wide leg. So the version I think I'm going to go for is a slim leg, which is version one. So I'm going to go for this version first. And then if I like them, I quite like the idea of version four as a wide leg jean. I was just thinking with that cord work, but I don't think it will because it's got no stretch. But I could look for a stretch cord to make a wide leg pair in black, maybe. Or maybe navy. I'm not sure. But I'm really excited about trying my hand at making a comfortable pair of jeans. And to go with that, now this arrived after Christmas. Um, but again, I asked my husband to get this for me. So this was a gift that arrived after Christmas, but it was part of my Christmas present to go with the jeans pattern. And it is, um, it's a box by Buy So Wardrobe. And it's one of their Ready Set Sew boxes that comes like this. And in it, or in it, should I say, in it is all of the things to make the jeans. So um, it's, you get a lovely little note that's stuck on the inside of the box that says, inside this box, you'll find your treasures. We all know sewing is one of life's pleasures. This box contains all you require to sit and sew to your heart's desire. There's notions, needles, denim and thread, a tea bag and biscuit to help clear your head. So now all you need is some space in your day to sit at your machine and get underway. Love from the Sew Wardrobe team, which is really lovely. So I went for the jeans making kit to help me along my jeans making um, process using the Megan Nielsen pattern. So within it, you get all the top stitching, thread, you get the normal thread, you get the buttons that you need, the zip for the fly. And then you also, I don't know if you can see, but you get needles included too, which is really helpful. Some jeans needles. I've already got my top stitching needles ready to you get go. some leaflets from the Sew Wardrobe team. You get interbasing, which is what you need. Um, and that's really handy. You get some fabric for the pocket bags. You get biscuits and a little tea bag. And then you get your denim. So here it is. So I've just got some black denim and it has got stretch to it because that's what I needed for my pattern. Um, it's lovely quality denim. So I'm really looking forward to using this kit to have a go at making my own jeans. Um, and like I said, I think I will document the journey, um, especially around my toile and the fitting, um, and I'll share what my experience is. So were. that was a really exciting box that arrived after Christmas. So before I go on to sharing what I got for my knitting and crocheting, um, I wanted to share with you some labels that I got as Christmas gifts too. So the first two label packs are from Little Rosy Cheeks. And this is their little business card. And I got a little note that said, Happy Sewing Elizabeth Love from Victoria. And then a little additional label that says, You Are Loved. And I've got two packs of labels that I asked for. And I'm going to be using these for makes for my girls or makes for other people. And the first one is a set of labels that says, I am smart, I am kind, I am brave, I am me. I just thought they were really beautifully done. Um, and then the second pack is um, labels that say, Made by Mummy. So they're really lovely too. So I'm really looking forward to using those in makes for my girls. And then because I've been enjoying making some things for other people, I've got some, I've got some little labels from This Is For Makers. Here we go. And I've got a little note from Sarah to say thank you. And I've got some little tags that you tie into anything that you've made. Well, you could do, you could use it for yourself or I'm going to use it for gifts. And I've tied one into my mum's Eden coat already. But it's a little tag that says handmade and then on the other side there's space for you to write a little note and then there's information at the bottom for how you wash dry and iron the garment that you've made and I just thought they're brilliant if you're making something for somebody else and they're not quite sure because it's homemade and not shop bought and it doesn't come with a little label that you normally get I thought it was a brilliant idea to let them know how they should care for their handmade item and then I also got some labels that say um handmade 
um because i just love putting a little label in i think it gives it a really nice finish when you're making something for somebody else um and then that's the other side of the label handmade i just thought they were really lovely so i've got a few packs of labels too now on to knitting um so if you're not interested in hearing about knitting um or embroidery then um this is the end of the video but thank you for watching um so something else i wanted to share with you was something i got as part of the felicity fabrics um blogger team group we've got a little whatsapp group and we chat on there and share makes and it's generally just really lovely to have a lovely little group of um women that are all interested in sewing and supportive and just lovely so we decided to take part in a secret Santa for Christmas um, and I think we used Elfster so that we all got buddied up with somebody. Anyway, my secret Santa sent me something really exciting um, and it's an embroidery kit. I'm showing you the back of the kit here. So here we go, lovely little green tin and it comes with three different embroidery sets within there um, to make a unicorn, a bee happy and then these lovely pink flamingos. Um, the kit comes with everything that you need um, and the last time I ever did any type of embroidery was when I was at primary school. So I'm really hoping that this will become something nice and quiet and calm I can do in the evenings. And um, just sat on the sofa when I'm not really feeling up to doing sewing, but I feel like I want to be crafty. Um, so I'm looking forward to giving that a go. So thank you so much to my secret Santa. And then over on my Instagram page, I asked a while ago about some top tips for learning to knit. I absolutely love everything I see on Instagram of everybody knitting. I'm so jealous of everybody that can create all these lovely jumpers and cardigans. Um, and the lovely Kath, who's made by Kath Craft, I'm sure you follow her already. She makes the most amazing things um, through knitting. She's been making these gorgeous, cute little cat things as well. So um, I'm really motivated and inspired, particularly by Kath, um, to learn to knit. So I put a um, sort of question out to say, has anyone got any top tips for learning to knit? And lovely lady Janet, who works for, I don't want to say it wrong, um, Froom Yarn Collective, this is their business card. Um, and she got in touch and said that she would help me put together a beginner's kit for learning to knit. Um, she would recommend a book and knitting needles and then some wool as well. Now I have absolutely zero idea about what I'm doing with that sort of thing. So I gladly took her up on her offer. Um, and I asked my husband if he would get it me for Christmas. So it arrived a few days before Christmas and I gave it to him, got him to wrap it up um, and I had to wait until Christmas day. And I have dabbled a little bit in learning some of the stitches. I'm nowhere near, um, you know, like I'm a million miles away from being able to knit. And it's the same with crochet actually, because I've been having crochet lessons. Um, so yeah, I'm a million miles away, but I, again, like the embroidery, I'm hoping to have a few other crafts that mean I can just sit on the sofa and chill out and just still be crafty rather than scrolling through my phone. Um, I'm really looking forward to learning to knit and embroider and crochet. I've just got to remind myself that it doesn't matter if it takes me six months to learn to do it. So I'm quite an impatient person when it comes to learning new skills. I like to be able to just pick it up straight away and I know that it's going to take time to master and hone the skills which is exactly what happened with sewing. I didn't pick sewing up straight away. So I need to remind myself that it's going to be the same with crochet and knitting and I will make mistakes along the way. But there have been so many amazing people on Instagram and on YouTube that have recommended places to go and get advice and I've had lots of supportive conversations with people too. So thank you so much to everyone that's been in touch. Let me show you what I've got in my lovely little goodie bag. I'll start with the book. So Janet put a book in for me and it's called Pom Pom Knit How. And she said that this was a really great beginner book. It goes through all of the different um, knitting techniques that you need to do. So there's an introduction and there's loads of different um, patterns in here too to make different things. So how to make a slip knot, um, how to cast on, what the knit stitch is um, and how to knit picking and how to knit throwing. This still sounds like a completely different language to me at the moment. Um, and it's one that I need to get my head around the terminology and language used for knitting and the same for crochet. Um, how to make a knit stitch, what the purl stitch is and picking and throwing. Uh, how to make the purl stitch, casting off. And then your first project, which is a warm up. So how to stitch some coasters. And then uh, tidy, uh, tidying up, weaving in yarn ends. There's a bit more terminology there for you. And then um, 
moves on to talk about um, swatching and blocking and then the projects. So within this book, you get different projects. There's fingerless mitts, um, there's simple cowls, knitting in the round, a hat in the round, cuffs in the round, cabled scarves, mittens, um, jumpers, a lace cowl, cardigan and bed socks. So loads of different patterns in here and it breaks down the steps. Um, and there's lots of tips, uh, which is amazing because I need all the tips that I can get to learn how to knit. But I'm really excited about teaching myself and learning a new skill. So then I got some knitting needles. So Janet included some wooden knitting needles and some metal knitting needles. Um, a four millimetre set and a six millimetre set. And then she chose a couple of balls of wool for me. So we've got Aran wool, which is green. Green's my favourite colour. Um, and then we've got some Colour Lab um, West Yorkshire Spinners wool in this lovely stripy colour. So there's purple, pink, um, lilac, and then there's a baby pink too. And this is what I'm going to use for my fingerless mitts or um, fingerless gloves. And then this one is for like all the practice um, projects, like the coasters and things. And then I also got um, some embroidery needles. I got a row counter and a crochet hook because you need those to help you with knitting as well. And then the lovely Janet included, which is just so kind. So thank you, Janet, if you watch this video. A little storage bag, which I think she's made by herself because it's got Janet's name there. And within this, there was lots of other things. So I've got a card as well included from Janet, which was really sweet. Uh, and then lots of other little bits and bobs within here. So these, I think, were, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold them all up, but they're in here. Um, Janet also included, she explains in the card. Um, so she says, I've popped a few little extras in for you. The needles are, for, are needed for sewing in the ends. The crochet hook's useful for picking up dropped stitches. And the row counters go on the needles to help you remember what row you're on. There's three little stitch markers. I mean, these are just adorable. There's a little cake. And then these look little little um, swatches of wool, I think. You know, when you practice your tension or something. Um, and then the little stitch markers sit on your needles when you need to mark a particular place in your knitting. And then there's some sachets that con contain wool wash for soaking your finished items, which is just really thoughtful. So that's really lovely too. And then I've got this gorgeous little neat, cute little bag that I can store everything in. So thank you so much, Janet. I'm really excited about learning to knit. And then I'm also really excited about learning to crochet too. So I did get some more wool and some crochet hooks so that I can have a go at learning crochet too. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Some of the Felicity Fabric bloggers team have been having lessons by Jane. Um, I'm sure you follow her already, but she's got an amazing YouTube channel with loads of crochet tutorials. I'll put all her details down below um, so that you can go and follow. But that was really good fun learning to crochet too. So that is a roundup of all of the things that I got as gifts for Christmas. Like I said, I'm really sorry it's taken so long to get this video out, but this is my fourth time filming it after the three disasters before. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do hit that subscribe button. I've got quite a few blogs planned over the next few months, including a couple of sew alongs, which I'm in the process of um, filming. It's just taking me a bit longer than I thought uh, with the whole start of term not being how we thought it would be. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.